Okay, welcome to our worship on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Every, hope everyone is well and healthy. Uh, let's begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, in his ministry, your son Jesus showed his mastery over all the forces of nature, including those of great power. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on him and to trust his guidance in all things as we pass through this world, confident in his care. Through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from Job chapter 38. 
The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud ways be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it may take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all this. Here ends the reading. The epistle is from the 10th chapter of Romans. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. And then the Holy Gospel is from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And they got, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, 
Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is that gospel reading from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Something like this has probably happened to you. It happens early on in relationships all the time. You meet someone, a new family member, a first date, a co-worker new to the place, and immediately you like something about her or him. You have to admit that you don't know that much, but you grab hold of some particular characteristic. He's kind, she's hardworking, and it's enough to like the person right away. And when you speak, that's how you describe him or her. Yesterday I met so-and-so, I like her, she's hilarious. And that's how things often begin. Truth be told, you know that she isn't only that, but in the beginning you find something and define him or her by that characteristic. And certainly it can go the other way too. Maybe you catch someone at a bad time and unfortunately you make a quick judgment, right? First impressions. And what happens next? Well, if you invest yourself enough in that person, you'll find that she or he is more than one description could cover. Maybe a moment arises that tests that person's mettle and you realize that someone who always struck you as kind of flighty can bear down or rise to the occasion. Or maybe you walk through the valley of the shadow of death with someone, and that someone whom you've always seen as happy breaks into little pieces right before your eyes. Maybe that person entrusted to you his deepest fears or her darkest dreams. And in moments like that, we have a couple of options. You can try to push the person back to arm's length, because you were more characteristic, you were more comfortable with your one-dimensional caricature, or you might realize that none of us is so easily defined. Because here's the thing, people by and large are not poorly written characters who are always this or always that. Life is, always has been, and always will be more complicated than that. People are more complicated than that, and they defy our expectations because, believe it or not, most people's goal in life is to not fit nicely into your little categories and show up to fulfill whatever your need is at the moment. Even your funny friend has worries, and your dependable friend fails people sometimes, maybe even 
fails you. And the point of all of this is that we do the same with Jesus. We define him quickly and simply, and because of that, sometimes we're frustrated or confused when he's more than that. One pastor tells a story about uh, someone he met and talked to on a plane, and the person said, at our church, we have a giant painting of Jesus, and he's laughing. That's the way I like to picture Jesus, he said. For me, Jesus is the guy who has fun at parties. Of course, that's too shallow a picture of Jesus. And the more you get to know Jesus, the more you realize that he isn't some poorly written character with no depth, no complications. And if you listened to St. Matthew today and listened to the gospel over the last several weeks, he will help you see that. John the Baptist wasn't sure about Jesus. And in fact, he was so unsure that he sent his disciples to Jesus, knowing, John did, that his death was likely at hand. He had seen his whole life through Jesus, and then near the end, he is so confused by Jesus because his expectations of what Jesus would be didn't seem to match up with reality. So he had to know. So John sent some of his disciples to Jesus with these words, Jesus, are you the one, or should we have to spend, with the, spend the time we have left looking for someone else? Many were gathered to see Jesus, more than that to hear Jesus, and he regularly defied expectations. They had traveled miles on foot to hear him, and sometimes they walked away less than satisfied, maybe even confused. Jesus doesn't receive a welcome home banner or a parade on his trip to his hometown. Instead, he's mocked and teased and sent away. He has compassion on and heals the sick. He touches the untouchable. He gives up private time with his closest friends, and he feeds thousands with a meager supply. Unexpected. Now he basically misses the boat, literally, and he's alone on a mountain. And when he finally says amen after he prays, his disciples in their boat are too far away from shore to hail. So what does he do? Well, Jesus walks on the water. They think he's a ghost. After all, they'd seen him do. This still stands out as special. He speaks word of, words of comfort and then welcomes Peter onto the water. But just as soon as this amazing moment begins, it begins to slip away, and Peter begins to sink. So what are we getting at? Here's the thing. Jesus is tough to get your hands on sometimes. He's bigger than and more complicated than something that makes perfect sense to us. He's tough to categorize. He's hard to label. Unless you confess in faith, that he is special, unique, only the Son of God. And though you can't quite grasp him sometimes, he's got a hold of you. Sometimes lifting children to his lap, sometimes dragging his disciples into the boat, but always holding on to us. And he'll drag you by the hand long enough that he'll take you places of unmatchable value. But it will also mean tremendous complication because she'll take you to the cross where beauty defies our ideas of prettiness and strength looks like nothing we've ever seen before and when you doubt and when you struggle then he'll reach out his hand once again and create in your spirit the confession they made that day and the confession that we make today that Jesus is the Son of God and though I don't quite understand him all the time, his relentless power is worth seeing, and his path is worth following. So come, says Jesus, trust and walk toward me. I have your hand.
If you think you failed him, well, I hope you know that sinking down alone isn't preferable to facing him in the boat. He reaches out his hand, he grasps you, his touch is both gentle and strong, and in his grip you'll know the price that he paid to have you forever. His hands bear the scars of his love, the price of forgiveness. He's crucified and living, and he's for you. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Trusting in your promise that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, we bring our prayers before you, our merciful and almighty Lord. You send out laborers into the world to proclaim the reign of Jesus. We pray for missionaries in foreign nations, as well as in our own nation, that your word proclaimed by them will not return in. For the church, including this congregation, we ask that you would use us to make your reign known in this place. You extend peace to us like a life-giving river for cities and towns, those who govern them and the people who dwell in them. We ask that those who work for peace and justice may be strengthened, and those who cause turmoil and injustice may repent. You comfort those whose lives are broken. We pray for all who suffer from disease, turmoil in relationships, and death including those we name in our hearts before you now. Amidst their fear, we trust in your hand of mercy outstretched to them, as it was to Peter, that according to your will, they may experience wholeness, comfort, and peace. You restore sinners gently. For all of us in the midst of situations where confession and forgiveness are the only way forward, Help us willingly and humbly to confess our sins and forgive as we have been forgiven. You have written our names in heaven. We give you thanks for the life and witness of those who have died in the faith. Help us to follow their example of faith and good works until that day when our time on this earth has ended and we join them in heavenly glory as your promised new creation in Christ. For the privilege to carry everything to you in prayer, we give thanks. Jesus told us to ask, seek, and knock, to call on the name of the Lord. This we do today, trusting that you hear our prayer and will answer according to your will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us again for worship. We're going to continue uh, to stream our services on YouTube and Facebook. And they'll be available on Zoom. Uh, also, if you do feel comfortable joining us in person for an outside worship service for this next month or so, we'll be having worship services outside under a tent, 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. They will also be available uh, on online if you prefer to follow us that way. Blessings.